congratulations, you've made it to module 12, got to the end of the course. Now there's just that small matter of assessment to deal with. Um, this week we're looking at some assessment strategies, assessment skills. Uh, of course the material in the study guide is focused on exams and you might say, Scott, why are we looking at exams? We have a, a briefing paper in this subject. Well, you're going to have exams in other subjects, so it's an important. this was an important place to start putting some of those skills in there. And the briefing paper is a kind of exam. Uh, but it's, it's a short, it's, what it shares with exams is that it is a short term exercise where you have a, a, a pressure situation to solve a legal problem, which is really what exams are about. What's different from exams is of course it's not in, a, in an invigilated situation, so you don't have to go to an exam room. Uh, and it also means you have access to all your resources um, that are around you. Um, and this is, I guess, is an appropriate time to talk about helping other people and collaborating and sharing. Um, it would be the height of naivety for us to think that no one ever discusses or shares these kind of uh, exercises, assignments, where, whether they be short-term ones or ones you have all, the ter all term to do. Um, but it's important that you know what the boundaries are in terms of collaboration and collaboration, uh, where it steps over the line. Unfortunately, the line isn't a nice firm line, but basically everything you write has to be your own work. And this really um, has a few factors to it. I mean, one is the technical factor that if you try to sort of modify someone else's work, turn it in, which is the... Uh, plagiarism detection software will see those similarities, will bring them up and will show us and say, hey, this assignment looks a lot like this one. And they've changed every second word and they've moved the sentence order around, but yeah, it doesn't matter, we can still see it. So that kind of thing is definitely not on. And I think most of you know that. Most of you know that sort of copying someone else's work and just moving things around is cheating. And it might be a bit of a cliche to say this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. The person you're ultimately cheating is, is yourself. Um, because if you do manage to cheat your way through a law program, um, there's gonna be no one to cheat from in practice. There's gonna be no one who's gonna give you the, 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 the answers. Um, your, your friends are, are, are all gonna have their own work. They're not gonna, you're gonna ring them up and say, hey, have you got, have you got the answer to this particular problem? Um, so uh, yeah, I know it's a, it's a cliche to say the worst, the person you're cheating is really yourself, but it's true. Um, there are more important things than just getting th through a program as quickly and as easily as possible. Um, it's important to actually learn to do what you need to do. That being said, we accept that people are going to talk about these things and they're going to share ideas and think about it. And I think that's an important part of the process. But it's an important process, part of that is to also realise where those boundaries are. And part of that is also remembering to keep something for yourself. Um, we, many of us are used to sharing cultures, particularly with the internet, and many people are very generous. And I've seen people do things like say, oh, the way to answer the question is, you know, here's a five-step way to answer the question, and here are the important authorities. Now, that, that of course, technically is, is collaborating. And I um, would hesitate to, to recommend any form of collaboration. However, I think talking and double doing your own work and then double checking with others and saying, hey, did you guys reckon that the answer to this one was probably this one? In small study groups, I think that's fine. Um, but when I said about keeping something for yourself, I think one of the important things is you might, find, you might think of something really clever. You might find an interesting argument. It's important sometimes to be self-interested and to go, hey, we're going to talk about this, but I'm not going to put that in the, in the public domain. I'm not going to tell everyone else about that one. I'm going to keep that one for myself because at the end of the day, if everyone has that in their assignment, you're not going to get more marks for it. You're not, you're not going to be one of the best, in, even, even though you might be the best in the group, you might be the person who really clued into this really interesting area of law. You've come up with the original form of analysis. If you share it and everyone uses it, you don't get the benefit of it. In fact, no one gets the benefit of it. Because the new baseline for, for what is average is then including, you know, the answer that you've come up with. So, yes, by all means, talk to people. And by all means, collaborate on the problem-solving process. But the place I would stop collaborating is writing. 
okay? As soon as it comes time to put down a skeletal structure and to organize your thoughts and to put things in there, that would be the point at which stop collaborating with fellow students. It's still okay, um, I guess, to get others to check your work, and I'd recommend that, particularly people who have tertiary qualifications, say, hey, can you have a read of my assignment to see if it makes sense? You're not gonna understand the law in it, but give us a sense of whether it reads well and the arguments are coherent and so on. That stuff is good. But once you start writing, that's probably the point at which you, you just stop sharing. And when a fellow student says, I'm really freaking out, I'm really stressing about this assignment, I'm afraid I'm gonna fail, can you just show me your assignment? The answer is no. The, at that point, um, it doesn't matter, you're not being a bad person, it doesn't matter how much that person is stressing out, it doesn't matter how much of that sob story they tell you, because at the end of the day, if they copy your work, and you get caught for it, and you want to get admitted, you have to report that. Even though your motives were good and pure, and the other person, you know, was someone you trusted, and you didn't realise they were just going to steal your assignment, and whatever, does not matter. You still have to report that when you go for admission and it is still up for the, uh, the admission boards are still going to uh, have the option of saying, no, you're a dishonest person. Sorry, sorry you studied a degree, but you're a dishonest person, you can't be admitted. Okay, so look after your own self and make sure, you know, you don't step over that line. That being said, hope the course was enjoyable enjoyable in some parts and I hope that some of the things that we've done are things that are going to have resonance later on. They're things that as you learn and as you learn more you'll be building on these skills and building on those ideas. You'll be building your portfolio, you'll be assembling a more complicated toolkit and the fact that we've done it here and now at the beginning will be something that will be important for you as time goes on.